And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. It's a common expression, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. However, what if the horse's mouth is filled with useful insurance tools? This is the exact case with the GEICO app. Yes, the app is free and therefore a gift horse. However, look inside the app and behold, emergency roadside assistance, digital ID cards, bill pay. Get the GEICO app, look it in the mouth, get amazing services. Thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why y'all so happy? Hey, you don't know. Charvette Mitchell is on the radio. It's time to get motivated, excited, and influenced. And influenced. Why? It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, live from Richmond, Virginia. And now, here to motivate, excite, and influence you, Charvette, Charvette Mitchell. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia. But guess what? Heard all across the world, wide web, O to the M to the G. How y'all doing today? We are really excited to have all of those that are tuning in from all across the world, wide web. Uh, I am telling you what, this show is going to be phenomenal, so if you are ready to be empowered and inspired and and motivated and uplifted, you're in the right place. Let me just assure you, you are in the right place. So let me tell you just a little bit about uh, the guests that I have coming on tonight's show. And so we're going to be opening up the show, top of the hour here, uh, with Ramona Gaines. Uh, She is uh, hanging out in the virtual green room right now, hanging out in the virtual green room right now, uh, getting ready to give us some information and some download and inspiration. She's a CEO of Still Waters Cafe, Inc. and Still uh, Waters Ministries, which is a nonprofit organization that provides a venue for Christian artists to perform and network. She's a seasoned entrepreneur. Uh, Ramona has operated and operates Parent Kids Network, which specializes in restoring and transforming the lives of parents and children. But listen, you're going to get to hear a whole lot about uh, her vision. She is the visionary of Movement is Medicine. Movement is Medicine and a wonderful series that she has spearheaded. Movement is Medicine, Volume 1, Women Determined to Rise, and Volume 2, Men Determined to Break Free. And, and, and she's got an awesome event coming up uh, in the Northern Virginia area. You're going to get to hear all about it. And so then in our second segment... Because you know how we do it over here. We have two segments. We free, we feature two dynamic guests. And so we want you to hang around for our second segment uh, as we chat with Minister Camille Schuler. She's joining us. Listen, she's an anointed, humble preacher, teacher, motivated, passionate servant. Uh, and I'm telling you what, she is a woman that's called to minister to this generation She's going to be talking to us about faith and fear and, and pushing past, and uh, she's embraced the Facebook Live, and so some of you may know her from Facebook Live and her, her inspirations there, so she is going to be chat- chatting with us in the second segment. So this is what I want you to do. Jump on Facebook, jump on Twitter, jump on Instagram, uh, Instagram and tell them what you're listening to. You tell them, hey, come on over. You need to check out the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, like, right now. <laughs> tell them to come over right now. All right, so let's jump right on in again. My first guest is coming up uh, to the mic, Ramona Gaines, visionary movement is medicine, here live on the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Hello, Ramona. Welcome. Thank you so much, Charvette. Thanks for having us. We appreciate that. Oh, it is an honor. It is an honor. So let's let's start. Uh, I mean, I just, you know, your bio is packed full. Let's start off talking a little bit about um, your ministry and how all of that got started. Um, so Still Waters got started um, because I was going through a, a bad a bereavement process. Um, I lost my grandmother when I was about 24, 25, and mm. she really was my mother to me and was, you know, who raised me and instilled Christian values and things like that into me. And so I was having a really, really hard time getting through that period, but I always knew that arts and entertainment and and Jesus were the things that, you know, were therapeutic for me. So I kind of just took the things that she instilled in me and created Still Waters. Still Waters really came from Psalms 23. He leads me beside the Still Waters. And it was just, you know, God giving me a vision to create a place 
for others that were going through things similar to me, young people, young adults, and so also to provide a Christian entertainment um, environment in the middle of the hood so that on Friday nights, you know, parents didn't have to worry about where the children were. They were there. They were hearing good, clean music. It was inspirational. And I also took an um, entrepreneurship piece and added to it so that they would learn how to run a concession stand. They would learn how to wait on tables and things like that because I just wanted to give them another way to make money without being on the corner, without selling drugs and things like that, and just opening up their eyes to other things. So that's really how uh, Still Waters got started. What an out-of-the-box approach. Now, that's that's ministry. That's right, ministry. right. Do you think we have gotten gotten backwards or lost um, the essence of ministry and what it really means? Well, I think sometimes we get out of touch with the people. Um, Mm -hmm. And the people are not, you know, they, they need a pulpit message, but they also need to be touched. And so when we look in the Bible, when we look in the Gospels, Jesus did have a, a, a big ministry, and he talked to the people on the mountains and, and everything like that. But there were times when he had close encounters with people, and those, those encounters that he had were life-changing. And because they got touched by him, they went and, you know, revolutionized towns and cities. Sometimes all people just need is that encounter, and they need that touch. And that would, you know, unlock the evangelist or the prophet or whatever, because we don't know what people's destiny is when they come into our presence. You know, we know they're coming to our presence for a reason. But, you know, I just know that one encounter will change your life. I, I know that because I know that's how my life was changed. So I just think it's important that we just bring that personal touch back to ministry. You know, don't forsake the other parts of the body and the kingdom because they're all necessary. A personal touch is necessary as well, you know, and so many examples of it in the Gospels. Um, so many times when, you know, Jesus just spoke a word and healing and transformation and things like that began. Wow. Well said. Well said. I, I, I'm telling you what, I, I applaud that certainly. And I love how you pulled, like you said, the entrepreneurial piece into it. And as a seasoned entrepreneur, what a great way to mentor, uh, mentor and give give back so let's talk a little bit uh, with your entrepreneur hat on about a parent Mm -hmm. kids network parent kids network um really got started when i got laid off um i was doing the parent education department at a children's museum and it really became my passion you know i have a daughter she's about to be 21 years old but i wasn't parenting her properly and that was because of you know, my childhood and how broken it was coming from the home I was coming from, you know, growing up, you know, all we knew was discipline, but we didn't have that love piece, or we didn't have, you know, so much discipline with uh, consequences. So I enrolled in this uh, institute called Institute for Family Professionals through my job, and it was life changing. It gave me some other tools to parent my daughter with. And so once I, um, once I got those tools, I was able to meet other parents and teach them those tools. And I just found out, you know, in the African-American community, you know, a lot of times we just, you know, want to beat our kids or want to discipline our kids. But, you know, we got to talk to them. We got to find out where they are. We got to learn how to praise them. And the uh, uh, thing that I really learned the most was learning your child's love language. There's a book out called The Five Love Languages for Couples. It's one for teenagers. But learning your child's love language and learning your love language. So, like, Parent Kids Network is just, like, um, allowing the, the parent to heal, but also allowing the parent to get some new tools so that they can change their household. Because, you know, we want to teach the parents how to partner with the education system and things like that. Uh-huh. But if we don't give them the necessary tools or if they've had a negative experience with school and things like that, then they don't know how to do something different for their children. So I just wanted to come back with something new and fresh and give them some new tools. You know, I I tell my parents, they're like a pillow. I want to fluff them back up and send them back in. Oh, I love that analogy. Because it's worth doing. It's it's a good job. It's, uh, It's They say it's a thankless job. But out of all the things that I've had the ability to do, parenting is the thing I'm most proud of. That gives mm-hmm. me the fulfillment I need. You know what I mean? I'm just blessed and honored 
And I told my daughter this one day that I get to paint on your canvas. I don't always get the strokes right, but I'm just blessed and honored that God has given me you so that I can paint on your canvas and propel you into the places that he wants me to send you to. Because the Bible says that we're to shoot our children as arrows. And so, you know, that's what I've um, just been working towards for myself. And we're all in this together. So when I come to them, it's not like I'm an expert, but I'm here to share information with you. If, you're, if what you're doing is working, then continue on. But if it's not and you want to try something different, here's what I have to offer you. Oh, my goodness. How can listeners find out about Parent Kids Network? Parent Kids Network is on Facebook. And they can go to that page on Facebook, find out any information that they need, and also find out when upcoming workshops will be starting up again. But all the information that they need is listed on there. All right, there you have it, there you have it. Okay, so let's let's talk about movement is medicine. And so I know there is a backstory to this. So give us we want the full scoop. We want we want all of the juicy nuggets about what this is, how it came about and, and everyone involved. Okay, so movement is medicine um, came about through God. It was divine because I didn't know what was going on or what we were even embarking on. But I started on a weight loss journey of 2011, July. I was at my highest weight at that point. I was 323 pounds. My height, I'm 4'11 and a half. So that was just a recipe for disaster, for a heart attack, for a stroke. I was in the middle of rehabbing my ankle. I had fell at work, and I was in a boot cast for almost a year. So I told my physical therapist, I was like, I want to get this weight off. You know, what what can I do? So he started incorporating exercises and things into my physical therapy. You know, started, you know, telling me better things to eat, how to incorporate more water and things like that. So between July of 2011 and February of 2012, I had lost 40 pounds and didn't know it. And so didn't I was know like, it. Uh, we were at my daughter's Sweet 16 party, and I saw my brother and my sister whispering, and I was like, well, what y'all talking about? I knew they were talking about me. And so my brother called me over. He said, you lost weight. I said, I know, but I don't, you know, I didn't know, you know, how much. I knew my dress fit me different when I put it on, but you know how you just, you know, keep going. So uh-huh. then I went to the doctors, and I found out I lost 40 pounds. I was like, whew, well, you know, how do we keep this going? So I yeah. decided to go ahead and sign up at the gym. And when I went to the gym to pay for my membership, my daughter said, Mom, don't worry about this. I got this. She paid for my membership. And I was like, wow. You know, that said to me that she wanted her mom here. She wanted me in good health. I got some more things to see. You know, so after that, I started going to the gym. We started going to Planet Fitness together. And then I joined a group called Black Girls Run. So I started walking. I didn't think about the run part. I was like, you want to run one day. I didn't think that at the moment. (laughs) Uh-huh. 5.15 in the morning, I was getting up and I was going out there. That was so life-transforming because at that time of the morning, nobody's talking, but it's just you and it's just God, and you're out there and you're on the water. And, I mean, all the mess that just stuff coming, you know, coming up out of my spirits and out of my emotions, you know, you know, dealing with absentee fathers, dealing with being molested, dealing with being raped, all of those things, being, being a single mom, you know, having to raise my daughter. Yeah on my own, not having that be my dream. That wasn't my dream. And so one day, it just was so frustrating, and I was out there, and I was crying, and I was like, I want to quit because it was too hard. And God was like, you know, if you quit, where are you going? He said, this time, you're quitting on you. He said, you blame everybody else for quitting and this and that. He said, but you're going to quit on you if you don't do this. So by July of, what, 2012, I had lost 79 pounds. And I have been sharing my weight loss journey on Facebook. And one of my friends from college, you know, we were just talking one morning. We were just talking about that song called The Blessing of Abraham and how I didn't ever think that good health was your inheritance. You know, we think about inheritance as money, land, and cars. But then that morning I got understanding that my inheritance was good health. And so my friend said to me, movement is medicine. And I was like, oh, cool, that's nice. And I got up and I walked away from the computer. And the Holy Spirit said, go back. He just gave you a gift. So I went back, and I was like, okay. 
movement is medicine. So then the Lord took me over into the Bible when he showed me the ten lepers. He told them, he said, as you go, you will be healed. And that's what God was beginning to speak to me. He said, as you go, I'm going to heal you. And these things that have been, you know, draped on you, holding you down, bogging you down, they're going to begin to drop off of you. It wasn't just about the outer weight, but it was about the inner weight that I was carrying on the inside, the low self-esteem, the low self-worth that was causing me to emotionally eat because I didn't value and love myself for who God created me to be. That's really the crux of, you know, how it, wow. it came about. And then I had started writing the book. And so as I was sharing my journey on Facebook, other people began to share their stories with me. People were going through divorces. People were dealing with miscarriages. They were dealing with their own emotional eating issues and things like that. So I said, well, maybe I'll ask them, can I share their stories? And then somehow I stumbled onto an anthology and at the time, I wasn't even sure what it is, but then I said, well, we can invite them to write their own chapters, and we'll put the whole book together. So our first book, Movement is Medicine, Get Up and Move Something, is 16 women telling their stories about how they got up and they moved something, and how they wow. began to share the weight, you know, whether it was dealing with the divorce, whether it was dealing with being yeah. raped or molested, or it was uh, dealing with... Um, mental illness or you know domestic abuse it was so many different stories that you know people that you see every day you have no idea what they're going through you know what their battle is you know we look at the outside but it's God that really knows what's going on on the inside and what we need to be healed and delivered from it I call it a deliverance ministry in the form of a book that's what I call a it. deliverance ministry in the form of a book. And what is so powerful uh, is that, and, and we got to give a shout out to author Latanya Boyd. She's uh, listening in and commenting from Facebook. She said, very inspiring. Uh, wait, drop the mic. Health is part of your inheritance. She said, just drop the mic on that. Drop the mic on that. Um, but what's so powerful is that the anthology with, uh, you know, the first book was 16 women. You know, even if you can't relate to number one or you can't relate to number five, maybe you'll relate to number 13 or maybe you'll exactly. relate to number three. And so that exactly. that is the power. Uh, and then I'm sure everybody kind of shared, you know, different things that that they did. Um, did you see any right. common themes? Yeah. Um, emotional, mental. Mm-hmm. Um being spiritually unaligned um not you know we're hard on ourselves you know as women we're our hardest critics we don't do well with self-care um I saw that you know but I saw people saying to their families like listen you know I'm drawing the line here I can't do this for you anymore because I gotta go I gotta go and I gotta take care of me because if I don't take care of me I'm not gonna be any good for you so people had to draw defining lines and make, you know, plans and meal plans and things like that to say, you know, I'm worth this. Because, you know, we don't always feel like that. Or we don't always put ourselves first as women, as wives, as mothers. You know, it's always somebody else that we try we put in front of ourselves. And it's a challenge because yeah. that almost looks more important than you are. But nothing is more important than you because if you don't take care of you, you can't be your best self for anybody else. You can't. You can't. You can't, you can't, you can't. Listeners, if you just tuned in, hey, uh, you're listening to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, and we're uh, we're chatting up here in our first segment with Ramona M. Gaines. Uh, movement is medicine. Uh, this is perfect this time of the year. Uh, you know, a lot of people, some people struggle with people having resolutions. Listen, I, I don't struggle with that. Listen, if you want to have a resolution or whatever you want to call it, embrace it you want to do something different so this is a great time of year for us to kind of bring this type of guest to you um so that you can be inspired so ramona how can people get a hold of the book people can get a hold of the book if they go to uh, movement is medicine dot big cartel dot com um that's movement is medicine dot big cartel dot com and they can purchase the book there or they can even go to amazon type in the words movement is medicine they can purchase them there um but we're all over the internet or facebook we have our own pages uh, movement is medicine bookstore 
or Movement is Medicine, so they can find us in those four places. All right, wonderful. And if you're hanging out at Charvette dot com. Um, the link to purchase the book is in the blog, bottom of my blog article about Ramona, which has her full bio. So again, if you're hanging out on Charvette dot com, um, it's it's right there uh, for you. Also, if you're listening from a mobile app, hey, mobile app listeners, it's right there in the um, mobile app. You should be able to link to it. Um, from there. All right. So let's talk about. So we've got the book now. That volume one, you had you featured ladies, but then you did a second right. volume that featured gentlemen. So talk a little bit about that because usually you don't hear. You'll see women share their weight loss transformation and all of that more frequently than you see men. Men, you might see more about the the muscles and all of that. But talk about how you've got the men in this. Well, the the second one was still ladies. We just went oh, okay. beyond the weight. And we talked about domestic violence. We talked about mental illness. We talked about suicide. I think we had 17 authors in that second book. So then the third oh, okay. book, we got the men. And we had oh, 12 men. Okay. And they talked about education. They talked about um, being raised without a father. They talked about um, being raised as a biracial child. Um, my brother, he was a returning Marine. He talked about PTSD, depression. Um, something, you know, that, you know, it's not a forum where men, African-American men can come together and say, you know, I'm back home now, but how do I deal with what happened over here in this yeah. in this territory, in this land? Um, talked about low self-esteem, self-worth. We talked about community activism. Um, we talked about prostate cancer. Um, uh, one gentleman was um, born with sickle cell. So just talked about being a male child living with sickle cell, dealing with the health issues, but still being made to feel like he couldn't cry. He always had to be strong. You'll be fine. Don't worry about the needles. Men don't cry. Things like that, that, Mm -hmm. you know, men have to deal with. We had another gentleman, he talked about, you know, dealing with five miscarriages and everybody, you know, coming to the aid of his wife, but what about him? And nobody, you know, really being there for him to support him and what he was going through and how he looked at intimacy as death. And, you know, those are things that will come in and cause rifts oh, in marriages wow. and things like that because, you know, that that comes at your ego. Men men deal with ego. They deal with different things. And yeah. their egos and their self-esteem are a lot more fragile than we want to give credit to. You know, because in, you know, society, we, you know, gave them this, facade that they have to be strong and they have to be rugged but they got feelings and they got emotions too we need to create a place for them to express them uh, for healing because how can we expect them to be in a place to lead us if they're not healed we we can't just say you know get over it come on let's go if they got stuff and they got baggage that they need to get healed from that's so unfair for them to not have the same play uh, I say playlist that we have. They don't have the same information we have. They don't have the same outlet we have, and we expect them to do something that they're not equipped to do. So if there are leaders, because this is what the Bible says, and we're going on what the Bible says, and they're called the priest and the prophet of the home, well, then the priest and the prophet needs to be able to get healed, to say that he's hurting, and to get through the things that he needs to get through so we can come together collectively as a family and even as a community, Charvette. That's so, so important. Yeah. Wow. You just said a whole, that was like, that part right there was really like a whole entire show by itself. Like, that is so incredibly um, impactful and empowering, really, to think about, um, you know, that men don't necessarily have the same outlets or, like you said, the same playlist that we have. And so, wow. So how do um, how do people get a hold of that book? And they're probably all in the same place, right? Right. They're all in the same place. They're either on Amazon or they're on movementismedicine.bcartel.com, um, all volume one, volume two, volume three. And, I just, you know, I just say, listen, even if you don't buy the book for yourself, any of them, they're an awesome gift to somebody. Um, that you want to encourage and empower. And like you said earlier, you might not relate to number one or number two, but number five or number seven or number eight might be that story that you need to encourage you because we need to see people that look like us that are going through the same thing. So I I said to them a a while ago, this is us just passing back a baton 
Not that we're perfect, but we've come through some things, and we just want to encourage you to come on up and come over this wall. And don't let this thing let you um, be stuck. You know, sometimes we get in a place where we just need help getting unstuck. So yeah. that's why these were created, to help you get unstuck and get you moving. Because once you get moving, you get your strength, you start feeling better. You ever been in the bed and you have a cold and you just feel, Ugh, but then you get up and you start taking a shower and you just move down around a little bit. You start feeling a little bit better. Absolutely. That's important. Oh, my goodness. That's important. Okay, so now we got to talk about the event. So, um, and so give us all the juicy details of this wonderful event and listeners uh, uh, Ramona is a sponsor um, of the show uh, so you will be hearing her commercials um, so this is her so this is pretty cool because sometimes you don't get to actually hear some of our sponsors live uh, so she's one of our sponsors uh, for January and February so you'll be hearing the commercials but tell us all, all the juicy, de- juicy details about the, uh, the conference or and I'm saying conference but the event you have coming up well, we, what we're, we're going to do is a man cave um, I was talking to um, my barber, David Artis. I just want to give him a shout-out. Awesome man of God um, that has just been pouring into my life. But, you know, we were sitting there one day, and we were just talking about the book, and we were talking about root causes of things. You know, um, I don't know if you heard of a book called Straw Man, What's Your Name, and Pigs in the Parlor. Those were books that we were raised on back in the day, talking about, uh-huh. you know, spirits, you know, um, clusters, and you might see the leaf, but there's a root. And he was talking about oh, the roots wow. of cancer, disobedience, and um, gossiping, and backbiting, and things like that. I was like, oh, my goodness. So the Lord, I left, and the Lord was like, you need to do a man cave in a barbershop. I was like, okay, well, let me see, you know, if he's, he's open to it. And he was immediately open because, you know, the barbershop, the hair salon, the nail salon, those are places that we gather in the community. So yes. you know, we're going to bring you into a familiar place where you already talk, you already dialogue, and we're going to take the different topics in the book. And each month, each lesson will be based loosely around one of those topics and just open up the forum. I'm just a facilitator. But what he brought to my attention wow. was he said, who told Moses that he was an Egyptian and he was uh, the child of Hebrew birth? And I was like, his sister. And he, you know, I just said it with such indignation. He was like, right. So you're just their sister telling them who they are. Telling them that there is a king on the inside of you, and we need that king to awaken. So we're going to provide this environment. We're going to provide this place where you can get healing, you can get whole, so that you can go forth and be the king that God already preordained you before the foundations of the world to be. Sometimes, yeah. and this is not just for men, but for women, we get caught up in muck, we get caught up in stuff, and we don't kind of know how to get out of it. You know, it's like um, when you first have the baby, you know, it's a beautiful thing, but it got all that muck and all that stuff. And you need the nurses mm-hmm. to wash it off, clean it up, and open the baby's eyes. This is what, like, yeah. this is going to be for the men. This is what that man cave is going to be for them. So I'm so, I hope you can hear the excitement in my voice. Yes, I'm so excited. I hear it. Um, that we're going to be able to provide this for them um, so that they can get healing. They, yeah, our brothers need it. They need a place. They need a place. Yeah. And so how can listeners participate, be a part of it, all of that good stuff? Okay, so they can go to our Movement is Medicine, the bookstore store, and they can click on the Eventbrite link. We have an Eventbrite link on there, and if they click on there, it'll take them over to the event. The event is going to be Monday. It's MLK MLK Day. I thought it was just so cool. The Day of the King, we're going to tell them about being a king because that's who they are. So it's going to be yeah. Monday, January 16, 2007. I'm sorry, 2017 at 6 o'clock. It's only two hours, 6 to 8. We're going to have a small light meal for them there. And it's going to be at Kingdom Cuts at 1456 Ridge Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19130. So they can look all on right. the Movement is Medicine bookstore page. All the information is um, there, posted. But, I mean, we're just opening up to whosoever will come. And tell your sons, tell your nephews, tell your cousin and them, peanut and them, tell them to come on down. Because it's going to be going all on right. at the barbershop. There you go. So that my Philly cats, Philly, Jersey, New York, y'all, Delaware, I'm throwing you in there too. Y'all all know how to do 
Y'all know how to get to where y'all need to get to. All right, so let's talk about the Northern Virginia event. We don't have a Northern Virginia event. Maybe you make you know it with somebody I'm, else. I'm trying to put, you know what, this is hilarious. I'm trying to put you in North Virginia, and you are not in North Virginia. God, <laughs> are you moving me? <laughs> Yeah, listen, I'm moving you. My listen, listeners, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I don't know. It's some Northern Virginia connection. I don't know what it is. Uh, but anyway, okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> no, I'm not moving. You move when the Lord tell you to move. <laughs> I know that's right. I know you. that's right. <laughs> All right, so the goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence, and we want to know what continues to motivate you. God and my daughter. Those, oh, those are the two yeah. things. Um, God, because there's so much that I know that he's putting on the inside of me, and I know that he's um, called me to do great things for kingdom, and my daughter, because of the legacy I desire to leave. And it's just that simple. It's those two things. Wonderful, wonderful. And how can, if people want to connect with you directly on social media, how can they connect with you? They can connect with me on uh, Ramona M. Gaines on my Facebook page, or they can go over to Visionary Ramona M. Gaines Ministries page. But both of those, I will get right back to them. Or even on the Movement is Medicine, Parent Kids Network, or Still Waters. And Still Waters is S-T-Y-L-L. It's not spelled the traditional way. But I'll get back to them um, on whatever page that they connect to me on and the email addresses and everything are on there. So, yes, I'm really easy to find. Easy to find. Well, we thank you so much for stopping by the show. It has been a pleasure chatting with you. It's been awesome talking to you as well. As well. Thank you so much. Awesome. Oh, you're welcome. All right, listeners, we're going to take a um, quick commercial break, and then we're going to be back with our second segment. We have Minister Camille Schuler, who's coming up to uh, the mic. Listen, she's been hanging out in the virtual green room, enjoying some virtual salad and snacks that we have for all of our celebrities in the virtual green room. And so she's coming up. She's an anointed, uh, humble preacher, teacher, motivator, and passionate servant. And she uh, has an ear for what this generation needs to hear. She's called to minister to this generation. And so, listen, I don't want you to move. We'll be right back. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Charvette will be back after this. Have you made a resolution this year to lose weight? Need a boost to help you stay on track? Then you can't miss Optimal Living Magazine. Intentionally Loving Myself Weight Loss Challenge. At Fit, Fabulous, and Full of Faith in Woodbridge, Virginia on February 25th, 2017. Get your tickets at www.optimallivingmagazine.eventbrite.com. Fit, Fabulous, and Full of Faith will focus on weight loss from an emotional and spiritual perspective, image branding, and wealth building. Together, we will stay strong, stay the course, and be intentionally compassionate towards ourselves as you choose life through our food choices, thoughts, and deeds. So, mark your calendars, gather your girlfriends, and meet us at Woodbridge, Virginia on February 25th, 2017. Get your tickets now at www.optimallivingmagazine.eventbrite.com. See you there. Hello, we are 123jobzone.com, an online job search portal. We are user-friendly, and if you're searching for a job, with us, it's easy as 123. Step 1. Go to www.123jobzone.com and register as a job seeker. Step 2. Once registered, upload your resumes. Step 3. Get connected with employers looking for people like you who are ready and willing to work. Don't forget to follow 123 Job Zone on Twitter and Facebook to find out more about our upcoming job fairs. What are you waiting for? Stop by 123jobzone.com today. Good luck with your job search. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day by LaTanya Boyd consists of inspirational messages that offer daily words of empowerment, promote spiritual growth and development in the Lord Jesus Christ for your day-to-day living. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 inspirational quotes to jumpstart your day. Available now on Kindle, ebook, and paperback. Log on to www.latiboyd.com. 
She's here to motivate, excite, and influence you. She's Charvette Mitchell. Charvette Charvette Mitchell. Mitchell. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show with in-depth interviews from today's leading authors, gospel artists, stars that you want to know about. And now, Charvette Mitchell. All right, welcome back again to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Hello and welcome to all those that are tuned in, listening in uh, on the phone lines. We see you, those that are coming in from Twitter, from Facebook, and from all across the world wide web. We appreciate you listening in. We're moving right on in to our next segment here with Minister Camille uh, Schuler. Uh, she is coming up to the mic. I'm bringing her live uh, on the air right now. Hello, Minister Camille. Welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for asking. All right. Awesome. Well, we are really uh, glad to have you on the show. And I am telling you what, um, this is, uh, I love to call these kind of behind the uh, behind the person, get to know the person uh, type interviews. And so um, I'd certainly love to hear just how ministry, you know, all got started for you. Okay, certainly. I'll be more than happy to tell you that. Um, well, I, my father and my mother are pastors, so it kind of was in me. Mm. And then um, my father and mother have a church in East Orange, New Jersey, called First United Tabernacle Ministries. And, you know, as a PK, you're always labeled that you're going to be this, you're going to be that. And um, I ran from my calling for actually a very long time until I got really sick one day and God was like, you need to get up and tell the people what I have shared with you. And then I stopped running after that. I just was like, it's time to go. Put on my shoes and get going. So that's exactly what happened. Um, I have a whole lot of faith because of my grandmother. She taught me how to pray. And yeah. the first part of my faith movement was when I was applying to college where I applied to four colleges and I wasn't the smartest. I didn't have the best grades. So I said, God, I want to go to South Carolina, University of South Carolina. And so I put the um, welcome packet where the name of the school was. I ripped it off and I put it in the prayer box. And I told God, this is where I'm going to school, regardless of grades, regardless of SAT scores, ACT scores, this is where I'm going. So I packed a month before, before I even got the acceptance letter. Mm-hmm. And my dad's like, why are you going to South Carolina? You don't know anyone there. I said, I know my pastor, Pastor Holly. So I put it in the box, and of course I accepted, got accepted into the University of South Carolina, um, one of their branch schools, graduated with a BA, and now I currently have a master's. So I mean, my faith in God hasn't changed. Wow! And so, listen, you gave us a whole bunch right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back a little bit and then come forward. So, um, being a PK. And for those of yeah. you who may not know what that is or means, preacher's kid, so that's kind of like the common common term there. Um, you know, you often will see either they run towards ministry or they run away from, from ministry. Yeah, yeah. And so did you feel like initially when you were like, yeah, I'm not ready to accept this right now, was it just because of the things you've seen in ministry, or you're just like, God, I'm. This is not. I don't. I don't. I don't want to do this right now. I'm too young. Let me live my life. Kind of. What were you think? What were you thinking? Well, in the beginning, it was a little bit of. Um, in the beginning, it was a little bit of everything because I was like, I don't like when people put a label on me. I'm like, I'm going to come into my own. Whatever I'm going to be, whatever God says I'm going to be, that's what I'm going to be. So I told my parents initially what I wanted to do. But they had a sort of plan, and I said, I love you guys, but i got to do what God told me to do. So I, as soon as I said, well, God, let me just pray about it. So that's what I kept doing. I just kept praying about it. And when I came to school, I said I love to write, so I wanted to be a writer. And as I wrote, I wrote from my heart, and people would say, oh, you've got really good writing. I said, okay, I got it. I'll be a writer. And then God said, no, I need you to do more than just write. So... It was scary in the beginning, really terrifying, because you didn't want to disappoint folks, because I used to be a people pleaser, but then I realized it's not about people, it's about God, so I, yeah. I just took a leap of faith. A leap of faith, and so what do you say to the person, and maybe you know it's a millennial or a young person who um, is kind of scared maybe to walk out 
into what they feel God is directing them to or just to walk into their purpose um, because they have fear, either peer pressure fear, fear what people will say. Mm -hmm. Do you have a couple tips for that listener that may be listening in and that fits that category? Sure, yes, ma'am. Um, do it afraid. Do it alone because in the walk that you're doing, you're going to have to do it alone, but you got to keep in mind God got your back. That's my slogan. God has your back no matter what. If you have no supporters and you feel like you're alone, God has your back because even though I did it afraid, I had to keep trusting God no matter what. I might have cried some nights. I might have pulled out my hair and asked God, what in the world am I doing? But in this generation with any type of millennial, they'll realize that... If you seek God first, then it gets easier. And then I realized as I got older that it's easy to trust God. Even though I may not even trust myself, God is always 110% behind me. So you got to keep pushing and keep fighting and, you know, striving for excellence. Keep striving, keep striving. If you just tuned in, hey. You're checking out the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, and we are uh, chatting it up here in our second segment with Minister Camille Schuler. All right, and so what do you, what advice would you have, Minister Camille, for parents that maybe have millennials or have kids that have just gone off to school? Uh, you know, we're they're oh, back, wow. we're back for winter. You know, the next break. Um, yeah. Any any recommendations for parents? Well, first, cover your children. I mean, my parents cover me, and they still cover me because I mean. They still have to trust their children, but if it wasn't for my parents covering me, believe it or not, I remember my mom and dad waking us up about 30 minutes before we went to school and praying for us because we never knew what was going to happen, and I appreciate them doing that. So I'm going to encourage parents to, especially children going off to college with everything they have going on and the type of peer pressure that they have going on, cover your children. Make sure they're okay. You don't have to check on them all the time because, you know, they're going out into them their own adulthood, but just cover them with prayer. Make sure they know who they are and who they serve. And allow them, encourage them not to be distracted because so many things in college can distract you. I can um, attest to that because even though I spent four years in university, I was on campus for one year. And the things that I saw was just crazy. And I was like, God, just keep my mind. So with the yeah. millennials, I encourage them to pray when things get difficult and understand that you're not alone because your parents really want the best for you, even though I thought the same thing that they didn't and that they wouldn't understand because they're older and I'm their child. But the good news is that if they realize that put God is number one, your parents love you number two, and then your education, it all like flows smoothly and you don't have to worry about what is this and what is that, and God will guide you. He will guide you. And that's good for everybody listening. Let me, let me yes, I agree. Yeah, that's good for everybody pray. listening. Uh, what, can, yeah. what do you think churches across um, the America can do um, to better connect with younger people, better connect with millennials, better connect with this generation? That's a good question. That's a real good question. Let me think about that for a minute. No problem. I'll let you think about that because there's a there's a lot. Uh, I think a lot of different things that can be can be done. While you're thinking about that question, I do have a question that came in from Facebook. Uh, we'll yes. we'll tackle this question. Thank you, author Latanya Boyd, who's listening in from Facebook. She said, "Did you feel pressured as a PK? Did you feel pressure um, as a preacher's kid? Not sure what kind of pressure, but mm -hmm. that's her question." Oh. To answer her question, yes, I did, because you're always in the spotlight 24-7. And uh, even when you thought you were doing something right and it was incorrect, you, in the back of my mind, personally, I always thought somebody was watching me. Some, you know, my mm -hmm. father or my mother is going to find out before I tell them because somebody's always watching. And so to answer her question, yes, I mean, of course, because you're always trying to, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's and make sure that everything is in order. Because if it wasn't in order, oh, my God, that's the first family. So, you know, there there can't be any problems there. So, yes, I did feel pressure. Yes, definitely did. And you know what? It's really kind of unfair um, because I think, uh, and even we see that with President, you know, uh, Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle mm -hmm. and their daughters, it's almost like the first families. And now I'm going to say this is for churches or first families in general. Mm -hmm. It's e mm -hmm. it's more restrictive. It's a higher standard than average. And so, 
you know, any mm-hmm. little thing. And so I think we need to recognize that. I think people who are not, um, you know, don't have parents who are in ministry, you know, should really, really kind of pause and, and ask, you know, are you ha- putting a heavier expectation on the preacher's kids than you put on your own kids? Let's go there. <laughs> yeah, now, that's y'all true. Don't want that's to, y'all don't want true. to start going there because you will, your <laughs> kids will be running crazy but the preacher's kids, oh, well, the, the preacher's kid did this, or they did it, or they didn't do this. But your kids, we can't find them on Sunday. <laughs> so I do think, I do think, and, and listen, I'm saying that. This is my show. This is that the guest didn't say it. Exactly. I'm saying it. Yes, you want to be mad? <laughs> would anyone be mad with me? But, you know, the truth uh, has to be mingled with, we're mingling that with love. But, um, yes, yeah, so I think we do need to think about that. Uh, and there's so many um young people who have parents in ministry and I'm gonna say in ministry even if your parent parents aren't um, the pastor you know if your parent is mm-hmm. the minister of music if your parent is the head of the deacon board if your parent is a ministry leader um, yes, it's you know this all of that is still in there and I can uh, attest my mother is an elder a deacon trustee mm-hmm. all that kind of so you know I certainly relate in that respect Wow. So as as life moves on, um, you are happily married. I gotta gotta put that in, Brother Johnny. Uh so yeah. how did you uh how did you meet and and all of that and, and now a nice married couple to be an example to other young people. Yes, ma'am. Um to be honest with you, I uh, was my neighbor. Uh and we lived in the same um apartment complex, about ten steps away from each other. And um, definitely the love of my life. I was not looking for anything, and I was in a computer lab, and he was watching TV, and I commented about the show he was watching, and I thought that um, he was watching the Cosby show, and he wasn't. He was watching Sanford and Son. Anyway, I went ahead and looked for a dress for my girlfriend's wedding, and I was literally walking out the door, and he's like, will you go out with me? And I was like, what? I don't know you from nowhere. I don't think so. (laughs) And then I just moved there in December, and we met um, July of 2010. And I said, you know what? I'm having a little party. My friends are coming over. Just come over and whatnot. And since then, the rest was history. Wow. I love that. I love that. I celebrate love, and we celebrate happy happy and healthy relationships here on the Charvette Metro Radio Show. So wanted to give a shout-out to Brother Johnny. Uh, and uh-huh. so you have embraced Facebook Live um, so uh, tell people how they can, because you, you do some really great things. So so tell um, the listeners um, how they can get to your page and then some of the things, some of the topics and some of the things that you cover on your Facebook Live. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's two pages, uh, Camille Shula Ministries and then my personal page, which is Camille Felicia. Um, there's a few things I talked about. The last thing I talked about was um, – let me see. Hold on. Last thing I talked about was basically finding out who you are. The one that I really liked the most was no more distractions because a lot of people got distracted. And mm. I think God speaks to me about my personal issue, and then he'll say, hey, talk to the world about that because you're not the only one going through it. Um, yeah. The one thing I also like is the fact that you can get anybody from anywhere to watch Facebook Live. And so I... I stand and I sit as a mindset motivator. God gave that to me like months ago. It's like you're the mindset motivator. And I was like, what? And he said it's because it begins in your mind. He's like, anything you do yeah. begins in your mind first. And he says, you're the person that's motivating people to catapult them to the next dimension, to the next century, whatever it is they're looking for. You can pray with them. You can cry with them. But most importantly, you have them to change their perspective or way of thinking. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. And um, so you're a motivational speaker as well as minister. So um, you are able to come as listeners, you know, have uh, a women's conference, a symposium, a a service. You're able to come and and speak. Are there any um, specific Mm -hmm. speaking topics? If you're coming like from the motivational speaking side, anything that you you hone in on when you speak motivationally? Um. Well, to be honest, I think it's where the individual is because I realize um, that people are in different places. So when I go to speak motivationally, I mainly deal with the problem that needs to be resolved. So, for example, I can only talk about me. There was a time where I was depressed, and I was like, God, I don't know how to get out of this. And I listened to um, a speaker 
And she says, you need to want to get out of whatever situation that you're in. So I kind of key on, or I face and I realize that the individual, I'm one-on-one. I like groups, but one-on-one really helps because we can deal with the root of the issue and what you're trying to um, resolve. But overall, I think the mindset makes a big difference. And I keep telling people, it's your mindset and your attitude. If you keep a negative attitude and you don't change the way you're thinking, you're not going to get out of the situation that you're in. Agree. Totally agree. Totally agree. And um, I love that back in um, the end of last year, you did a six-week um, enrichment course called I'm Taking Life Back Now. I'm Taking Life Back Now. Tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Oh, that was fun. Um, I'm still having fun with it, actually. Um, and my clients are having a great time. Spots are still available. Um, God gave that to me when I was going through. And he was like, you just got to snatch it back from the devil. And I was like, what? He was like, you are, every day you're going through your normal routine and you're letting the enemy win. You're giving him credit that he doesn't deserve. So he said, I'm taking my life back now because people are waiting. And the reason why I did it the last part of 2016 was because um, at that time it was just crucial to me. I was just going through a lot of stuff. And God said, you can't go into 2017 with the same stuff, same baggage, same excuses, same um, procrastination. You, You can't do it. So when he gave me the topic, I was like, yes, God, I want someone else to be able to do the same thing. And I'm really excited because um, a lot of people now can see the results and feel grateful that they have the opportunity to work with me because they see changes in their lives. Oh, wow. They are seeing the changes. And that's what is most impactful and empowering. And so if there's someone listening and saying, oh, I need to be a part of that, how how do they connect with you on that? Um, My website, camilleshuler.com, and that's S-H-U-L-E-R, and all the information is right there, how to connect with me. That's the uh, training course. I have a mentoring program. And the new one that I have is a prayer and strategy session, you know, to basically take 2017 by the reins and run but don't know how to get there so I guide and direct them there and I love the fact that the prayer and strategy session because I'm a woman of faith so we got to pray about it oh wow and so that how long are these like training sessions and how are they set up is it video is it audio what's the detail um it is up to the individual most of mine are all audio right now um but it is a virtual type of um session um they can do Skype or video if they choose to um, they just need to let me know of their preference, but most of them um, now is all um, audio, conference call type of thing. Okay, awesome, awesome. And what's the website address one more time for our listeners? Yes, ma'am. It is www.camillejeweler.com. All right, there you have it. And so I love that you are taking what um, you have been influenced by and, and been helped by, and now you're helping uh, other other people. So, again, check out the website, listeners, uh, right there for all of that great stuff. Do you have any speaking engagements or anything coming up, any events that you want to let the listeners know about? Uh, yes, ma'am. On January 21st, um, I live in South Carolina, so in North Charleston, South Carolina, I will be with Calvin Logan and the – Calvin Loader, Logan Power Show, that's 2370 uh, Gordon Street in North Charleston, South Carolina, and then January 27th and 28th, I will be in Atlanta with Minister Roxanne Rutherford at the Kingdom Girls Empowerment Tour. That's an Eventbrite also um, conference, and there are six other women with me, and we're just totally excited. God is going to move in a mighty way. All right, there you go, there you go. So if you're in the area... You can meet her live and in person uh, right there, right there, right there. All right. So the goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence. And we want to know what continues to motivate you. Uh, big question. Um, two things. <laughs> yes. Um, God number one. Well, actually three things. God number one, my husband number two, and um, number three, my family. Um my immediate family, my parents, my sisters, my brother, they are, shout out to the Faulkners, they just are amazing, Kevin, Katarina, Kareem, mom and dad, Bishop, 
Lloyd Faulkner and co-pastor Paul Faulkner, shout out to them. Because without them, I wouldn't be here. That's right. <laughs> Any <laughs> other shout outs you want to give live or on the radio? Yes, we'll do. Okay. My church family, Family Worship Center, with my pastor overseeing at Harley and my church family there. Um, I also want to just give a shout out to uh, my best friend, Paula McPherson. She's in Canada, but I love her. Oh, hey, we have listeners from Canada, so hey, hey, girl, hey. All right. <laughs> I love it, I love it. When can we catch you again uh, on Facebook Live? When's the next time? Or do you have a regularly scheduled on, time? Um, yes, ma'am. I do Facebook Live and I do Periscope. You know, everybody's on everything else now. So oh, yeah. there are two things. Facebook, I do every other week. So this week I'm going to be on um, Periscope. And my Periscope and Twitter, of course, are the same, which is just Camille F. Schuller. And it is around 9.50 Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. And then the following week, of course, I'll be on Facebook Live. All right. There you go. Get your schedule in order. What a great strategy. Uh, and that's a that's a teachable moment right there if you want to do more live streaming and you're like, or if you want to be accountable and be like, I don't want, I want to be consistent. Just set a schedule mm-hmm. like Minister Camille. Just set a schedule and follow your own schedule. All right. And I know you've been able to connect with people from all over, um, you know, you doing the live streaming. Yes, ma'am. I have. It has been a lot of fun. Um, it's different to know that people who don't know you will listen and are encouraged and are, you know, can relate to you whatever the topic is that we're talking about. So it's pretty amazing across the board. I'm truly humbled and honored for the opportunity tonight and just every day to encourage someone and and touch their heart in one way or another. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for stopping by the show. It has been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, too. It's a pleasure. I love it. Oh, great, great, great. All right, listeners, uh, I'm telling you what, we opened up. And we ended up with phenomenal, phenomenal interviews and just empowering and impactful. So listen, um, if you missed any portion of it or if you know someone and you're like, that person, they they should have been here listening, just send them to Charvette.com. Charvette.com has the replay um, podcast of all of our shows that air live. That's a great place to catch it. Also, iTunes podcast. You can pick me up in iTunes for free podcast. Just look for Charvette. Also, if you listen from your mobile phone, our mobile phone listeners, I'm waving at you, and you can get uh, download the app. So that way you just have the app right on your iPad or your tablet or your phone, uh, and you can go to any of your uh, any app store and uh, just look for Charvette. That's Android, BlackBerry, and iPhone. Y'all, y'all laughing at BlackBerry. BlackBerry uh, is still big over in uh, Africa, so we have a lot of um, – app users from Africa so I'm waving hello and also our friends in Bahamas we say hello as well to you all right so this is gonna wrap it up Uh, as always we will have more phenomenal shows for you outstanding shows for you coming up check me out at charvette.com again for all of our past shows and then also if you are interested uh in my web design services listen i want to be your web designer hashtag your web designer check me out at charvettemitchell.com charvettemitchell.com for your web design needs we're gonna see y'all later bye Live from Richmond, Virginia, you've been listening to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Catch Charvette Mitchell every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Interviewing all the stars you want to hear from. So until next week, stay motivated, excited, and influenced. This is the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison, here to tell you GEICO has more than just great savings. Much more. Yes, while GEICO could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than 10 years. That's more like it. Furthermore, GEICO has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than GEICO. GEICO. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. 
And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. It's a common expression, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. However, what if the horse's mouth is filled with useful insurance tools? This is the exact case with the GEICO app. Yes, the app is free and therefore a gift horse. However, look inside the app and behold, emergency roadside assistance, digital ID cards, bill pay. Get the GEICO app, look it in the mouth, get amazing services. Thank you.